Google's Stadia cloud gaming service isn't yet cleared to run on Android TV devices, but I have a way to make it work, and I'm gonna show you how to do that next. Hands on Android is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether they're working in the office or remote. Visit lastpass.com twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on Android is brought to you by IT Pro TV. Visit itpro.tv slash twit for an additional 30% off for the lifetime of your active consumer subscription. Use code twit30 at checkout. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Hands on Android. I'm Jason Howell. And today, we're going to talk about Google Stadia. Surely you've heard of it already, but if you haven't, Google Stadia is Google's game console in the cloud. They actually have some highly tuned, high power PCs running in the cloud, running excellent versions of top tier games, and then streaming the video and audio down to whatever device you happen to be using. You buy the game directly from Google to stream on the Stadia servers. Uh, Stadia streaming, of course, streams in 1080p, to your device for free. So that's pretty awesome. You still have to buy the game, but the service itself, the streaming of it is free. Um, if you get Stadia Pro, that includes 4K streaming and runs $9.99 per month. But they have that free tier. It's pretty cool. You can kind of check it out and see what you think. Works on Android, iOS, laptop, desktop, Chrome OS, tablets, uh, Chromecast Ultra even. Uh, officially, Stadia supports nearly 40 Android devices. Uh, recently, very recently, they actually launched a new mode in the Stadia app, an experimental mode that allows users to kind of try it on their own unsupported devices. If you don't have a device that's officially supported, you can switch this experimental mode on and see what you think, see if it actually works. And that brings us to Android TV. Now, Stadia is expected sometime and possibly soon on Android TV. But as of now, Stadia is not officially supported on Android TV. Google has hinted at, at the possibility of this coming sometime this year in 2020. Obviously, everything is turned upside down right now, so who the heck knows? But we've heard rumors of an Android TV hero device codenamed Sabrina in a dongle form factor. Kind of looks, I guess, similar to the Chromecast Ultra, let's say. And it's expected that this device is going to be kind of the launch device for Stadia compatibility um, and Android TV officially. Uh, so until that happens, you know, the question remains, is it even possible to run Stadia on an Android TV device? Google would say no. You can't do that. However, this new experimental devices feature actually makes it so. And it's a little hacky to get there. Um, I'm going to show you the process you are going to need a few things in order to do this. It's not quite as simple as going to the Play Store or anything, so you're going to need to jump through some hoops. But if you really want to play Stadia games on your Android TV device, that's why I'm here, and that's what I'm going to show you how to do right now. So let's dive right in. All right, first, what you're going to need. So obviously, you need an Android TV device. I have the NVIDIA Shield TV here with its included remote, and ultimately, we're going to be installing an APK file of the Stadia program on there. You're also going to need a game controller. The PlayStation 4 DualShock is what I have here to show off, but you can use a console controller uh, that you have lying around. And then uh, a mouse. I'm using the wireless Apple mouse. Uh, but let's break all these components apart and kind of get them set up. So first of all, let's connect the mouse to Android TV. Now, if you're using a hardware mouse, you just plug it in and it should work. It depends on your Android TV box, whether you have the USB port for that, uh, but you can do that. If like me, however, you're using a Bluetooth mouse, you're going to want to sync it up via Bluetooth. So I'm going to go ahead and put my Apple uh, mouse into pairing mode. And then over on my Shield TV that's all loaded and booted up and everything, I'm going to jump into settings and find remotes and accessories. And this is where I can add any of my Bluetooth accessories. So we'll go down to add Bluetooth accessories. And again, you know, if you're doing this, make sure your mouse is actively in pairing mode and it'll think for a little bit, but then eventually, hopefully it'll find the mouse. I found the mouse in the list. I just go ahead and select that to pair. And after a few moments, boom, the mouse is gonna make some of the following stuff easier and even possible to begin with. So this is kind of a mandatory part of this uh, walkthrough. 
Now, while we're here taking a look at all this hardware and what we need, let's pair our controller because we're already in the Bluetooth settings. So like I said, and like I'm showing, I'm using the PS4 controller. If you have a different controller, uh, feel free to refer to episode five of Hands on Android. And I show you how to do this, how to sync via Bluetooth any of the main current uh, console controllers into Android. And so that walkthrough is going to help you here. For me, though, I'm using the PlayStation 4 controller. So I hold down the PlayStation button and the share button simultaneously, and I get that pairing mode that blinks the light on the back. So back into the Shield TV, now that my PlayStation controller is in pairing mode, I go into that Bluetooth accessories setting and I, I tap to add Bluetooth accessories. And then eventually, and actually quickly here, it, it appears. So I go ahead and tap that and confirm it when it asks to do so. And boom, it's synced up. We're definitely gonna use that later to actually play some games. So now what we have to do is actually find and install the Stadia app. If you go to the Play Store, you're not gonna find it on an Android TV device because it's not officially cleared. So to do this, you're gonna need a File Explorer app that actually allows uh, for installing APKs. I am using a File Explorer on Android TV called FX Explorer, excellent File Explorer. I'm also using my laptop, by the way, to transfer the APK to the Shield TV. But first, on the Shield uh, in FX Explorer from home, we're gonna need to give our laptop access. So go to Web Access in that list. This actually provides a URL and a session-based one-time password. So that password changes every single time I do this. So this is gonna allow me to access my Shield TV file structure from my computer wirelessly, very handy. So let's go ahead and uh, we've got that running. We're gonna jump back over to the laptop. Before we can actually move the file there, we have to actually get the file. So let's go to apkmirror.com. This is a site that I love, they're trustworthy. It's run by the folks who do androidpolice.com. Uh, so it's a legitimate site. Go to apkmirror.com and search for Stadia. And they basically collect all of these releases that Google does and other developers do of their APKs so that you can find them after the fact. And while we're on APK Mirror, we've searched for Stadia, we found it, tap to download the APK and you'll see it saving to your drive. So now we have it saved onto the drive. Go ahead and open another tab here and type the information that FX Explorer gave us for web access. Put in that, uh, that web address, and then it'll ask for the password. And so I'll put that in. And now once I've done all of that, I can actually see the file structure of the NVIDIA Shield TV from my laptop. Pretty cool. So it's really at that point just as easy as finding that APK, the Stadia APK that I downloaded from APK Mirror and dragging it into that browser window for FX Explorer web access into that folder. And it happens really quick. It's not a large APK file at all, not a large file size, and it's there. All right, so now we're gonna jump back over to the Shield TV. This episode of Hands on Android is brought to you by IT Pro TV. If you're interested in an IT career but aren't sure which one is right for you, well, IT Pro TV can help. Sign up for a premium membership and let an expert guide you. With over 4,000 hours of IT training, get the certifications you need to be successful. Go to itpro.tv slash twit and use code twit30 for an additional 30% off for the lifetime of your active consumer subscription. That's itpro.tv slash twit and use code twit30. IT Pro TV, build or expand your IT career and enjoy the journey. First things first, it's always good to just kind of turn off that web access. You don't need it open anymore. Uh, that's going to keep you more secure and keep things not running in the background when it's unnecessary. So we've done that. In FX File Explorer, go back to the home screen of the app and you'll see in their main storage. We're going to go there. This is going to show us the folder that we dragged that Stadia APK file into. And you can see it right down there. Go ahead and click the Stadia APK file. And you're probably going to be asked to permit unknown sources. This is a way to, to secure Android and Android TV from uh, installing apps without your knowledge or installing apps from unverified sources, AKA not the Play Store. But we need to do this in order to install this APK file. So yes, do this. 
Then when you go back, it's going to take you back to that file area again. Just tap that APK one more time because now when you do it, it has the proper permissions and it'll go ahead and give you the ability to install. Now this is where the mouse comes in, the first part of where the mouse comes in. I can't navigate down there with my controller. It might be different on your Android TV device uh, with my remote. Uh, it doesn't work. So I use the mouse to navigate down to, to point to the install button and click that. Um, and thankfully that mouse uh, trick works. Do that with the mouse. It's now fully installed. We are good to go. So now we've done most of the hard work anyway. So what we wanna do now on the Shield TV is open that Stadia app. And when we do that, you can see right away, this app is not meant for the landscape uh, screen layout that an Android TV device has. Everything's kind of forced in portrait in the center of the screen. Looks a little weird. Uh, the controller is not gonna allow you to click these UI elements in the app, because again, it's not set up for Android TV. Uh, and it's not a touch screen, so you can't just tap it. That's, again, why we have the mouse plugged in. So you're going to use the mouse to navigate all of these following screens. For me, it is a bit glitchy. You can kind of see there that cursor's kind of doing weird things, but it totally works. So I'm going to use the mouse to kind of click through, sign into my Google account, and I have the main screen of Stadia. From here, I can tap on my avatar in the upper right-hand corner, and that takes us into the settings pane. And then remember I talked about earlier this experimental uh, setting that was just released for Stadia. Well, go to Experiments, and you'll find it in there. That's the setting that we're looking for. Turn that on with your mouse, activate that, and then now when you go back out to the main screen, if you have any games listed there, I have Shadow of the Tomb Raider here front and center. I'm gonna go ahead and tap to launch that. And you'll see it starts off in this little small little narrow portrait mode. And then as it's loading, it expands out to fill the entire full landscape screen. And uh, that's when you know everything's all good. And after a little bit of loading time, those servers doing their work in the cloud, the game is loaded. Uh, my game controller works perfectly. I can navigate through the menu and launch and pick up where I left off. And what do you know? I'm playing Shadow of the Tomb Raider on my Android TV device, something that Google has not made compatible yet. But you can do it if you know, <laughs> well, if you know what you now know. And uh, it just takes a few, you know, a few hurdles to jump over in order to do it. Now, you will need to use the mouse to select the game every time. And so let's cross our fingers and hope that Google brings this compatibility sometime soon so you could do this all with a game controller or with your Android TV remote. It's definitely hacky, but sometimes that's kind of the fun of it as well. It totally works, and you're playing these games on Android TV starting now. So then the big question is, when is Android TV going to have compatibility for Stadia? Uh, I mean, obviously, I don't know the answer. I don't know what Google's thinking is there. Uh, like I alluded to earlier, everything is upside down right now. If Google was waiting for the Sabrina device to do it, well, I mean, hardware is being pushed back by a number of companies, including Google, thanks in no small part to the coronavirus and its uh, far-reaching effects. So if they had planned to release it by now, obviously that hasn't happened. Who knows? I'm guessing sometime this year. And is Google going to wait for that hardware release in order to do this or just release it eventually? Really, it could go either way because everything's so uncertain right now. Uh, but cross our fingers that this whole process gets a little bit easier until then, you have a way to do it anyways. Isn't that nice? Uh, send me your questions, your tips, your tricks, anything you want me to know about Android to handsonandroid at twit.tv. And then subscribe to this show. Would love for you to subscribe. Go to twit.tv slash HOA for Hands on Android. And there you can find the many ways to subscribe. Your podcatcher of choice, audio format, video format. Uh, you can even jump out to YouTube and subscribe there if that's your favorite way of watching Twit content. And uh, I hope that you do. Thank you so much for watching and listening this week. We'll see you all next week on another episode of Hands on Android. Take care, everybody. Be sure to check out the other shows on the network, like my other show, Hands on Wellness. I love to share different tips and tricks that's going to help you get a better grasp on your personal wellness. Just go to twit.tv slash how and subscribe now.